talks about everything that God had planned in Israel. Not one thing failed that God had planned to do. So it's on? Okay. All right. So, so we see that this man, a little bit about this man Solomon. We don't know how old he was when he became when he became king. Does anybody know? Because I don't know. Wasn't able to find it. You know, we can go look at how old David was and all this, but it doesn't really matter. But I looked for that because I, I wanted to I wanted to show that a young person, a person of young age, could. Uh, be someone of responsibility. You know, young people can be responsible. They don't always have to, you know, walk around smoking weed, wearing their pants down, young men out of bed with everybody to see. Because young people can be responsible. Amen. So, so Solomon, I think Solomon began uh, his reign as an humble person. I think he did. But we're gonna be we're gonna be going to First Kings three. We're going to First Kings three. And um, this is uh, Solomon at a point in his life where he becomes king. A lot of information in this chapter right here. So Solomon starts as an humble king. In this chapter right here, we're going to see that he falls asleep and he has a dream. Let's look at it right here. First King, well, I'm sorry, Second King, right there. First Kings three. Some of us have dreams, and we say, we get up and we say, "That's what the Lord wants us to do." I said, well, "That's what He wants me to do." He wants me. He wants me to preach. He has anointed my head in my dream to go out and preach to the masses. I'm well, we gonna find it in the Word. We got the word of God to verify what it is that God wants us to do. And the, the incorrect action that he has, it should be reined back when we look at the Bible. It reigns it in. When you tell yourself that in a dream, we've got to we match the dream up with God's word. So, chapter 3 says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of the building uh, made an end of the building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about chapter 9 goes in depth about him talking about it finishing it up finishing it up you know and building it and building his house and so forth and but this right here is be way before that you know, so Solomon, right here, we're going to see some things. In verse number two, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the, to the name of the Lord until those days. So they built altars, high places, and Gibeah until the house of the Lord was built. But we're going to see right here that. He gonna have sense enough to go to the right place to 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 sacrifice unto the Lord, just like we should. Every first day of the week, we should know because we read that the Church of Christ is where we go sacrifice to the Lord. Among other saints in this world, when they gather all over the world, we gather upon that day. Everybody should be doing the same thing because we got the Word of God. We got the Word of God. God God tells us what to do. We don't tell Him. Had a lesson. Had a lesson a few weeks ago, and we look back at the Exodus. The Exodus. When the children came out of Egypt, God put them on a strict diet. A strict diet of when you need to come before me. And that strict diet was three times a year. All males are supposed to come before the Lord. Three times. Starting at Passover. And all the rest of the feast proceeded after that. Three times. God prescribed that in Exodus 12 chapter. Nobody told God, well, you know, God, I think it would be a good idea. So they supposed to came on the first month. The first month, the 14th day. And it would be a good idea for somebody to say, you know what, Lord, I think the third month, 
Uh, on the tenth day ought to be good enough. What you think? What you What you think, uh, Moses? What you think, Aaron? You know. You see, God, they didn't tell God what to do. But you know, it's amazing. Nine day, we telling God what we gonna do. Yes. Different church on every corner, different name, different doctrine. You tell somebody off point, and you show them in the Bible. She don't care what I say. My daddy did it. My grandmother did it. My papa did it. Go and make some chicken. Stop by Popeyes and get you some chicken. And no sense of losing sleep over with somebody else that won't bleed. Because what you can read is, is stone cold. That's that's it. That's it. So so I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna get off. I do get off track quite a bit sometimes. So so only the people. Sack so verse three. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high place. That's the only thing he did, right there. See, walking in the steps of his father. But, I'm, but I like the, I like the high places. Sacrifice. Okay, but he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna change. He knows the difference. He knows the difficult. We're gonna see it right here. He says, and the king went to Gibeah to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. A thousand. Mind you, this is not the place yet. Places in Jerusalem. Could have built a tent out there. But anyway, in Gibeah the Lord appeared, verse 5, is that the right scripture? In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. My God. Amazing. Verse, verse 6 said, And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according, to his, according as he walked before thee in truth. And in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for me thy great kindness that thou hast given him a son to set on his throne as it is this day. Glory to God! Glory to God! Solomon is excited, and he's 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 happy for what God has done, giving him the throne of David. 7 says, And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. So he was a child. That's as far as I can tell for his age. He was a child. That's what he says. He says, And thy servant is in the midst of of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Now, what scripture is that? Verse number 9. He's going to talk to, he's going to tell Solomon some things as they go on. But isn't that something to ask for just understanding? He's not asking for good health. He's not asking for long life. He's not asking for riches. He's not asking for no Lexus. He's not asking for no, he's not no big old church with a thousand people. He's not, he's not, he asking for understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Amen. And we know, you know, you end up. Yeah, I was just going to make a point on that child thing. Uh, yeah, go right ahead. Uh, and I want to want to make sure that uh, that we understand that when Solomon is saying that he's a child, mm -hmm. he's saying it in a sense of of understanding Amen. Of how to lead God's people. I don't think he's using that uh, in the Amen. sense of an age. Yeah, uh, you know, being eight, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. When he says I'm a child, I think he's making it in reference of uh, being. Of not of a great understanding, right? Uh, as he would like to be or could be in directing and leading God's people mm -hmm. where he should go, which is why he's asking for wisdom. And I think that kind of correlates with what mm -hmm. 
Paul is talking about when he talks about the spiritual gifts in First Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter thirteen. He said, "When I was a child, I said, mm -hmm. as a child." And, and then when he became a man, he put child not that right. the, the gifts themselves were childish. Mm -hmm. and it was that the gifts, the purpose for them was to help them to mature, right. you know, you know, spiritually, so that they could uh, be all that God would have them to be, to grow up in, and mature. And so the gifts themselves, you know, were, were they had a purpose, uh, and it was to get them to have a complete understanding yes. as they worked together to mature, to be all that God would yeah. have them to be. Amen. 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 That's good, brother. Put that on top of the lesson. Amen. Definitely put that on top of the lesson. And appreciate that, brother. And so I'm, I'm in agreement with that. And and so therefore, it makes perfect sense that his understanding is as a child. Right. And so any of us coming out of the womb all should, all, all had that, on, that, that childlike mentality. Yeah. But we're, some of us are grown and some of us are a little younger, but we're all children of God. So I have to understand, understand that. So. So, 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 therefore, he didn't ask for anything monetarily, anything. He just wanted wisdom. But, but you know, there is some, there are some things that are deep rooted in us that only God knows. They're, they're deep rooted in us, and eventually they just come out like a fountain, start oozing out everyone, our ears and our nose, our mouth. They just come out, and. As a Christian, you have to be able to know, know what that looks like. You got to be able to try. The Bible says we got to be able to try the Spirit to see mm -hmm. whether it is of the Lord, see if it is, of, it, is of, it is of God. So we have to be very keen on this lion when he comes out. When he comes out, we got to be we got to be very keen of lion, wolves that wear sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they're they're raped. See, they're inwardly, inwardly. You know, we got we got a little dog. His name is Charlie. And he's got he's got some personality problems. <laughs> he really does. He got some personality problems, and that one right there deals with him because I don't know when he's gonna go off. <laughs> Sometimes I don't, but I know one thing: if he does, he got to find somewhere to stay. So I treated him with some kindness one day because he was having some rough times. He let me pick him up. I didn't know if he was going to go off and start biting me or whatever, you know. Didn't know. But I handled him, you know, I handled him with, with knowledge and understanding. And he's back to himself now. He must have been going crazy. Must have, must have ate something, you know. But So we have to know. We have to know. We have to be able to see. We got God's word. So we look at the word and then we look over there. Or we look at one another. You know, and, and we and we and we test those waters. So, he's going to ask for understanding. Verse number ten, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and has not asked for thyself long life, neither has given asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemy, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Verse 12 says, Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. This man is is accredited with three thousand proverbs, and we still read the book of Proverbs. We still read, and we, some of us we still quote the book of Proverbs, Song of Solomon. We look at the book of Ecclesiastes. What does he learn? What does he tell us? What does he tell us about the things that he stumbled over? Vanity. He says all is vanity, but he had to learn. He had to learn. Somebody probably told him, don't do this, don't do that, Solomon. The Lord has warned him right here. The Lord is going to warn him right here. He's going to warn him. He's going to give him some boundaries. He's like he gives everybody. God gives us all boundaries that we can't go past. And so, therefore, we have to recognize those boundaries. So, verse number 13 says, 
and I have given thee that which thou hast not asked. This is what God has given him, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, now this is a big if, verse 14, right here. He said, and if, so there's a stipulation right here, stipulation for everybody in here. If we continue in God's way, then we are his disciples indeed. If we continue to continue to be his disciples. He said, both riches and honor, so that there should not be any among, among thee, king like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did, then I will lengthen thy days. David, some, some, he had a problem. He had a problem. Now, he had more than one dream. He had another dream. 1 Kings 9, 9 and 2. Another dream. Another dream. But there are some things that are going to ooze up on King Solomon. But let's look at, let's look at this, this blessing that God gave Solomon. Let's, look at, let's drop down to verse number... Um, well, we're not that far from it. We just keep reading. Verse 15 says, And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Right place. Woke up with the right mind. I'm going over here to Jerusalem. Burnt offerings. So 16 says, then came two women. Now this is this is how he knows God had blessed him right away. Bam. Boom. Got his blessing. Right here. He said, Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. Coming to the king. Two harlots. Coming to the king. Verse 17. And the one woman said, Oh my Lord. I and this woman dwelt in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together there, was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. So, this is a case that somebody else needs to judge because these two women can't, you know, this, this, this child is going to belong to one, one, one person, but this, somebody going to be lying. Somebody always lying. You know, some, that's why they got judged. Somebody always lying. So you need to go to a judge. And God, the son, he's going to judge every person on this earth because somebody lying. Somebody lying. We got a big Bible here. Somebody lying. You know, it, it, it is, it's something how you go to a you go to a congregation and there's a lot of respect to person. There's a lot of respect to person. There's a lot of respect to person now. And just the funeral just this past week. Beautiful place beautiful place and uh, I got there kind of late but I got there okay. and the preacher was lying as soon as I got there the preacher was lying putting somebody in heaven after that everybody adjourned there's lots of people there lots of people there this one voice this one person is, 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 is commanding all these people is telling all these people what he wants to what he wants them to believe there is no one in heaven but, but God and His Son. Amen. Mark 16 chapter. God and His Son. Buddha not there. He not there. Muhammad never been there. We don't have no scriptures. He was, he was there. You know. 
those people that are being persuaded to, to strap themselves with bums, you need to you need to come to the Church of Christ. You need to, you need to come to Church of Christ so you can get some truth. Because these people are using you. Yes, using you. You're not gonna have no ten virgins in heaven. You're not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. But anyway, they had a they had a they had a real good sound system in there. When everybody when it was all over with and the paragraphs came up and they cranked it up. And it was some ladies in the choir back there. And it, the, it was cranked up, the music was bumping, like it was a club. One, 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 one lady was doing this here. <laughs> I'm saying, I, I, I was starting to you know, get Javier, you know. I don't think he saw it, but she was swinging. Boy, she was, I think if everybody left it would have been on. But you know, no music in the, there's no music in the New Testament. No musical instruments in the New Testament at all. See, this is what God is trying to show us with the Old Testament. Because there's a stipulation with, with Solomon. He can't, the boundaries, he can't go above or beyond those boundaries. See, we can't bring that in. See, Passover was a day that God said, you're going to do it the first, the first, the first uh, month. It's going to be the first year on the 14th day. And that's when they had to do it every time. So when you get to the New Testament, you say, upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, Acts 20, 7, Luke 24, 1 Corinthians 16, same verses, upon the first day of the week, not upon the first day of the month, or the second day of the month. You have to put that in there yourself, and then you violate Revelation 22 and 18, which says don't add or subtract to God's word. Wow, I got five minutes. Let me get down here to the end. So let's see what he did with the baby. And uh, right here, we're going to get ready to close. Let's see it. They were only two in the house. Verse 19 says, And the woman child died. And the woman's child died in the night because she, over, she overlaid it, slept on top of it, smothered it. Smothered it. You're not supposed to sleep with the babies in the bed. That's what they say, you know. And, and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. Well, that's, that's cold. That's cold. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. She know who her son look. My son look like. Anybody here don't know what their son look like? Smell like a daughter son? Smell like and look like? You just know. You just you didn't dealt with him for nine months. Nine months. It's not like it's not like the father. You know he you know he wasn't he was there, but he wasn't there. But he but he knows. You know because you know he knows. That's not my baby. No, you better come on with it. Twenty two says, and the other woman said, nay. But the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spank before the king. So they both they both said that son. Oh, well, Solomon is going to show the wisdom that God has given him. Then said the king, The one said, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead and the other said nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living and the king said bring me a sword I said and they brought a sword before the king and the king said divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other verse 36 26 says then spanked the woman who the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. And you know it wasn't hers. Mother not going to do that. No mother's going to do that. Well, you got some nowadays because they're getting worse and worse. But you know, no mother's going to do that. 
Then the, then the king answered and said, Give her the living child. Give her the, give her the, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of, of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So, 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 just, you know, hopefully the lesson, you saw yourself in the lesson. Hopefully you saw yourself in the lesson, and I saw myself in the lesson. And that we can correct those things that, that are not pleasing to God. The only way we can correct those things is to go through God's word. You know, if you're not a member of the body of Christ, you should be. You should be a member of the church of Christ. Amen. You know, anytime you want to be a, sit down and have a Bible study with anyone, a member of the church of Christ, you can. But, you know, we got plenty of water. And if you have a desire to be saved, because if you haven't heard the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then those that have not heard it, the Thessalonian book says, the first chapter, Verse 7, there's going to be some trouble when the Lord comes back, sends the Son back from heaven with, with his angels flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not the gospel. Amen. Know not the gospel. So, 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 so tonight, so tonight, hopefully, you know, that's what this is about, you know, to hopefully help someone see the gospel. You can hear that. You can believe it, just like the Ethiopian eunuch did. He believed it on, and he was coming from worship. Got baptized, did not understand what he was reading. On the road through Gaza, desert. God put some water there just to show him, and just to show us that water is important and necessary. So he got baptized by Philip. Philip went one way, he went the other way. So that baptism is that new birth. A new birth puts you inside of the body of Christ. But that mind has to be right in order to get baptized. First, you have to understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Just like a unit did in Acts 26 through the 38 chapter. I mean, through 38 verses. And once that happens, one is added. Nobody can join the church of Christ. you got to be added. Just like you're added, you, your, your child is added to your family. We're, we're, we're adopted. We're adopted. So therefore, you're added. Have, a, have family all over the world. All over the world. And so, therefore... You can be a part of it tonight, or any time that you, you, you feel that it's necessary. It's necessary right now if you haven't been, but we urge you to study the, the Word of God. Come back if you can. So that's the lesson.